you could play a vital role in changing the life of a child. Right now, thousands of kids in San Diego need welcoming families to open their hearts and provide a safe, loving home where they can thrive. And joining me today are Dave and Andrea Troutman to talk about their journey working as a family to support kids in crisis. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you were recognized by the county for going above and beyond as the East Region's Resource Family of the Year. And you started fostering a little over two years ago. What led you to that decision? What was your motivation? You know, we had kind of started this journey of growing our own family and had our own experiences of infertility and kind of got to a point of really just thinking, you know, what do we want to do? And Dave had always been interested in fostering and I had been interested in adoption. Um, so we thought, you know, let's just kind of get involved in that process. Now, you initially fostered two children, facilitated visits and supported reunification, but then those children needed to be placed back with you. Tell us about that journey. The children that had been with us um, needed to return into care and, and their family had grown since then. We knew that these children loved their baby sister so much and couldn't imagine a world in which they were separated. So we found ourselves um, overnight with three children under five in the household, along with the dog and each other. I think that's also what a lot of parenting in general is about, but also foster care is, is that sacrificial love, right? Like, Yes, it is really challenging to have three children under five. Yes, we were not anticipating having so many people in such a small place. When you love people and want to care for them and support them, like you, you do what you need to do in order to provide opportunities for success and happiness and joy and stability and safety. And the children were placed with you right around Christmas with the outpouring of love that you received. It kind of sounds like a Christmas miracle. The placement happened just a few days before Christmas and our church group organized to like make sure there were stockings and presents because we were bu busy building and setting up furniture and making sure our home was, was ready. There was this outpouring of love where people were like, wait, you need to have Christmas still. And we're like, yeah, we'll do something. And they're like, no, we've got it. And then we have this whole group of people who just organize like van trips to get stockings and toys and presents and wrap them. And it was absolutely magical. You know, we've also had um, family members, neighbors, colleagues give us clothes, buy us meals, just be there and support us um, throughout this entire time. And that has been really incredible. We have uh, neighbors or friends who will watch the children after they go to bed so that we have an opportunity to just spend time with each other. So it's been really amazing this wouldn't be possible without the the community around us. And, you know, if people are thinking about ways to support the foster care system and aren't yet sort of ready or, or able to take children into their home, there's lots of people who are doing the work who just need support and love because it's really, really hard. And so having those cheerleaders in your corner is really important. And while the experience can be overwhelming, you say it can be even more rewarding. Tell us about some of those joys. It's totally the greatest thing. I mean, anyone who is parenting or partnering and raising kids knows it's hard and it's challenging too. And setting that aside, like it, it's the best. It is the best. You get to watch the kids grow. You get to watch their relationships get stronger and just the way that they develop and change. And um, I mean, it's, it's awesome to watch. Like some of our kids, we've seen their confidence grow a lot and it's just so exciting to be a part of that. As educators, you inherently care about kids and you've seen kids with the deck stacked against them, but you've also seen the difference it makes in the life of a child when you have someone who consistently shows up. We are providing a space where they're gonna have opportunities or, or it's gonna shape their life forever, right? Like having the safety, having the stability, having this, this place where they can go and be loved during a time that's really difficult for them is gonna support them in the long run forming healthy relationships and healthy attachments. And so really thinking about the long-term impact of this, it might be a short time right now, but it's setting them up for a lifetime of success, um, both emotionally and psychologically. And knowing that it minimizes to the extent possible, the, the impact of the trauma in the short-term and the long-term is, is really rewarding. And what would you tell folks who might be curious about fostering? Just do it. You know, like these children need love. There's a tremendous amount of need. The stakes are incredibly high that there are children who are who are unable to live with a family, who are unable to sit down at the dinner table and talk about their day. 
And that's not okay. And, and, and if we have the capacity, we need to step up. And the opportunity and the knowledge that you can impact just one person's life and change their trajectory and change their future um, is both a tremendous responsibility, but a tremendous gift. To learn more about becoming a resource parent, call 1-877-792-KIDS or log on to sdcaresforkids.com. Dave and Andrea, we thank you both so much for sharing your time and your story with us. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank you for joining us on San Diego Living. We'll see you next time.